Thank you. Uh, my name is Bruce Walker, the uh, Chief Public Defender of York County. I'm also uh, proud to say I'm a York Action member. Uh, I'm also proud to say six days ago I was at the Hanover Tea Party Rally and had my picture taken with everyone else for some, by some agent. Um, I live in Winter Township, so right now with my wife, Felicia. I have uh, two children, a daughter, Courtney, and two grandchildren, and then a son, Eric, who's about to graduate from Virginia Tech and actually come back here to work as an engineer. Uh, I'm originally from Hanover. I'm about eighth or ninth generation in North County, if that's the word. Uh, I believe, personally, that a judge should not be an activist and should not legislate from the bench. Uh, constitutionally, I'm a very strong supporter of the Second Amendment and a member of the NRA. Now, I know some talk about endorsements and some have not. I'm proud to say I have been endorsed by the Pennsylvania State Police as well as New York City Police. Why I think that is important, I am the Chief Defense Counsel, essentially New York County, and yet I've been found to be professional, fair-minded by those police agencies. And I'm going to bring that to the bench. Uh, from a standpoint of uh, my prior history, uh, I credit starting out professionally as a third-year law clerk student working for the U.S. Attorney's Office in Oklahoma City to become the Chief Public Defender. Uh, when I returned to York County, I became the Judicial Law Clerk to Judge Casamass. Judge Casamass was the juvenile judge, and he had a great impact on me. Not only did he teach me the qualities of one of the finest, one of the finest judges in York County, but he also taught me about uh, the juvenile justice system and predicated on that, I became the first juvenile public defender. Uh, and I dealt solely with dealing with juveniles, their issues and treatment issues, and all alternatives to placing them in long-term placement facilities. I also uh, practiced, excuse me, the general practice of law with a law firm of Manifold, Mindball, and Bankenstein. I was solicitor to your Cayman Borough. In my spare time, when I had nothing else to do, I taught 14 years with the Penn State University paralegal program. As chief public defender and also as a private attorney, I tried over 100 cases, uh, been involved with thousands of individuals that I've represented. As chief public defender, I actually signed over 40,000 cases. Uh, I rep I, the head of an office of 32 with a $1.6 million budget, and I saved over $50,000 last year of taxpayers' money. And it's that kind of of uh, initiative, I believe, is necessary in the bench to watch taxpayer dollars. Uh, I'd ask you to vote for me and support me May 17th. I'm number one in both counts. Questions? I have a question for you. Um, this, it, it was referenced before the case where the uh, uh, man was robbed four different banks, I believe. And uh, from what I understand, you are head of the public defender's office that got him off on a technicality. How do you reconcile the ethics of this robber being free opposed to the law? Which is a tough question for any ju judge. I, first of all, I don't think it's proper for me to, to uh, comment on that specific case. It is pending appeal. The Commonwealth has appealed that case. Uh, let me take that out and just say, hypothetically, uh, it wasn't a technicality, it was the law. It was all recognized by all 50 states, and it had to do with uh, inter the Interstate Agreement and Retainers Act. Uh, so from a hypothetical standpoint, uh, and, and Judge Redmond made, I don't want to get into again, the discussion of the fact that case, but any judge has to make tough decisions. Uh, I don't know any judge that wants to set somebody free who may have committed four major robberies. Why do judges run on both ballots? The, the simple answer is they can't. Um, <laughs> um, and, and obviously, it, it, it's because uh, judges are different from any other animal. Now, the health courts can't run. Uh, they come in and run as a Democrat or Republican. Uh, for some reason, magistrates and judges are, of course, are treated differently. And uh, they give us an opportunity 
because it's not supposed to be clinically driven. We're not allowed to raise our own money. We're not allowed to raise money before a certain date, uh, which is the filing date of petitions. There's a lot of things that were covered under the judicial code of conduct that limit the way we run. So, yes, we have to do all this and be political, yet we're not supposed to be political. We're supposed to be neutral. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm, uh, I have a question. Are you dealing with uh, juveniles and sentencing? You said holding the guilty. Is there any review of the individuals who are uh, sent away to a juvenile center? And I have a reason for that. Uh, in the Hazelton area, there were three judges, I believe, are now in jail, and they uh, dealt with juveniles. And they were sending them, they, whatever current, they'd send them to the juvenile holding center. And they were getting a kickback from the people who were running these holding centers. Uh, <coughs> so is there any review on any individual juvenile holding centers to Jack? There is, a, there is a system that completely failed. This was our county. Yes. And yes. it failed. In fact, the General Assembly created uh, the task force, the commission, uh, which one of my attorneys actually testified before for our career the head of my juvenile uh, division. Um, that just completely failed. The DA failed, the public defender's office failed. Everybody should be facing some sort of sanction up there for what happened. You can appeal a decision in juvenile court to the Superior Court. Uh, so that's maybe the easiest answer. The other answer was, why weren't these matters being reported to the Judicial Conduct Board or to the Board Governing Attorneys. Uh, and I don't know why that fails to value. Pennsylvania, your county is the opposite of that. I'm going to ask you as well, please. Um, as a judge, um, do you believe it's proper to um, go out to the scene and do an investigation yourself? No, I don't. I don't think that judges don't know. I, I heard on occasion a jury actually, the jury members actually went out. I heard about that from a case. I don't think it's proper because the courtroom is where all the evidence should be presented. It should not be going out and trying to determine what happened at the scene or determine what the applicable facts might be in the case. I think that's improper. One more, One more question. How do you determine, as a judge, whether the evidence is good or whether it's bad, or how they're, how, whether they're wiggling around for their own good? That's, a, that's an interesting question. The, wig, the, wig, the wiggle exception to law. Um, first of all, we're governed by rules. Stronger rules, civil rules, rules of evidence. And if they don't meet those standards, and especially evidence rules, if you're talking about reviewing evidence, and then they're not either allowed in to the case or they're not considered. Uh, so my response to that is, we are governing by rules. I will follow those rules as a judge. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank